Hi everyone. Modeling. I don't really like modeling that much. I mean, it's okay. I like the process of making 3D stuff, but actually sitting down with meshes, attacking it with different operations, moving vertices around, like trying to click on the right things, remember the right hotkeys. I don't really like it. You know what I like more than modeling? knowledge. So in this video I'm going to talk about some alternative techniques for getting 3D meshes. I've noticed that in recent months I've been doing less actual modeling and when I do do modeling work I end up using these special techniques to get some interesting results that don't actually require much or any manual modeling effort. And I feel like this is something interesting to tell people that are especially new to 3D artwork that think that you know to make any kind of fancy mesh you need to do everything absolutely manually. So maybe by making you aware of some of these interesting techniques techniques, it might give you like a new approach to trying to make 3D artwork. So first of all, what's the problem with regular modeling? I'm sure you've been in a similar situation before. Like when you're starting out with your artwork, you've got something like really amazing you want to make. So you sit there in your blend file, you delete the default cube, immediately make a much better cube. And then you're looking at it going, yeah, yes, it's time to model something amazing, like a really cool gun for a video game or a spaceship. All right, I'm feeling good. Let's do this. Okay, let's look at what we want to make. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Let's make an edge loop. Yeah, let's put an edge loop there. Okay, now how am I going to get this to that? Um, Let's like scale it down and then that's not really close. Let's add some bevels and basically to get from one simplified result to a hyper complex result, it's going to take a lot of effort. You're going to have to have a really good shape transition memory. And when I talk about shape transition memory, what I mean is being able to visualize what shapes you want to add on to your current mesh and how you're going to get there. So for example, if you want to add like a cylindrical shape to your cube, you're going to need to know two things, how to make that cylindrical shape. And that's the easiest part of the process because you can just add cylinders. And the second part is the one that most people have trouble with. And it's how you're going to transition from this cube to this cylinder shape. This is what requires a lot of manual effort. For this, you need to be able to visualize the shaping to make this transition. And then separately from that, you're going to need to know how to actually make it. This is difficult. It's tedious. It's a skill, but it is part of the process which can be avoided. Okay, so let's throw something into the mix. Let's consider voxel modeling. Now, voxel was a bit of a vague term because well, it's overused for so many things. Using meta ball objects or just meta objects, however you want to call them, technically counts as like voxelized modeling. It's all about proximity between points on a grid. It's pretty much the same as doing remeshing as well. It's basically going to reconstruct the mesh you have. Now, voxel modeling is super, super useful for being able to kind of transition between shapes because it does it automatically. For example, if you take a meta cube and a meta cylinder or a capsule and you put them together Together, you'll see that immediately it's transitioning between them automatically. Now if you were to turn this into a mesh from the visible geometry, you're going to get something that's less sharp depending on the settings that you set for the meta objects, but it's still going to give you that transition. There are other ways to do this as well. For example, if you don't want to step too far away from the regular modeling process, you could like boolean the cylinder on, then try and clean up the geometry and do some beveling, but there's more of a technical issue here in the way that booleans create really messy geometry. So you need to have an understanding of being able to create edge loops appropriately and try transition between these. There are tutorials available online to help with that. And there are some tools as well. But out of those options we talked about, the most attractive one is the meta slash voxel option because it just gives us a result really quickly. It doesn't really matter so much if it's not that clean, if we're just doing general artwork tasks like concept art and not things which are super hyper technical, like doing like optimized vertex budget retopology for video games and creating models which are super optimized for UV maps for texturing or rigging for animation. Now, voxelized modeling is something which I've been doing a lot of recently recently because like I said it just subverts a lot of that process. So for example here is a kind of recent art project I was doing just for a bit of fun just experimenting with the remeshing process. I've made this really cool looking kind of frame thing around this character object. I can imagine some kind of like mutant creature being inside there instead. But like that frame looks kind of cool. How long do you think it took me to model? In fact, I mean, I've given you a spoiler that it's remeshed, but like if you just saw this, how do you think that would have been modeled? Because it doesn't look super clean. It looks a bit sculpted in a way. But no, the way this was done was just by making a cube and then while maintaining edit mode, just adding more cubes and just extruding them. And the actual mesh itself looks really messy, but when we go back into object mode, because we have the remesh modifier applied, it blends it all together. So if you like the process of making stuff using meshes, but you hate connecting them together, then you can just subvert that process entirely just by remeshing them. And there's no shame in that. Like you can take that remeshed result and do retopology over the top of that afterwards as well, if you really wanted like a cleaner version. Okay, so let's talk about some other tricks. Obviously sculpting is a really important one. There's no way you're going to model an entire human manually 
manually vertex by vertex. If you did want to model it manually, you'd have to use a subdivision surface modifier and you'd have to be super intricate and it's going to be extremely difficult. Easier for doing stylized artwork than realistic artwork. You'd have to manage so many edge loops and get the appropriate flow going for your geometry and ain't nobody got time for that. So sculpting is a super important part of the 3D industry. Like it's so much content relies on sculpting, but the sculpting tool set varies across different softwares. My personal favorite software for sculpting, even though I don't use it that much, is 3D Coat. The reason I love 3D Coat and I wish it worked the same way in Blender is because it has this pretty seamless way of maintaining live voxel sculpting, emphasis on live, and regular surface sculpting. So what I mean is you can just sculpt regular voxelized geometry, like just go mad with it. It's like simulating, removing, and adding clay. And because it's voxelized, it means that you can basically just cut holes through anything and the floating geometry will still be there and you can connect them again afterwards and it just it all connects perfectly it's fine but if you want if you want to add more details more sharper details you can immediately switch over to a surface mode with one click and then you're just sculpting on regular geometry again and that can go back and forth as many times as you like and you can increase the resolutions in either version and just like it and it's smooth like it's high performance we don't really have something exactly like that in blender but you can remesh your sculpts and of course like many other sculpting softwares have a voxel kind of remeshing but not necessarily live voxel sculpting. Anyway not having to worry about connecting these individual mesh points together means that you can just focus on bashing out a shape and this is where kind of kit bashing comes in a bit because if you have like a variety of different shapes you can just duplicate them, lay them over each other, not have to worry about the intricacies of how they're connecting and then just boop voxel you're done. Now this is an extremely powerful tool for doing concept art in three-dimensional space because you're not wasting time on this meticulous process of getting the right faces, the right edge loops, transitioning in the perfect way to get the right shape. Now because data is data and we can convert between different types of objects, like I said, you can take the geometry from like any meta ball type mesh or any voxelized result and then sculpt over the top of that. So I did this gun recently, I blocked out the basic shape using meta balls because I was not going to model this manually and once it was done I made the geometry from what was visible and then just sculpted a bit over the top of it basically adding these harsher crease lines and making some dents where I wanted more dents and then over the top of that I basically did some very simplified subdivision surface modeling just to add some extra details and then I added a couple of cylinders for like some barrel pieces. This didn't actually take that long and then the textures were done just with procedural materials and some vertex colors over the top so no UV maps whatsoever. So basically what I'm trying to say here is if you're new to the 3D art space and you think that there's only one way to do something for like manual modeling effort then you're wrong there's like there's many ways of doing stuff but there are just different trade-offs between the techniques because like i said in a lot of cases you might need perfect geometry if you're creating content for very specific industries but if you're just doing art for fun or for concept art then you don't need to put yourself through all of that pain anyway let's talk about a few more techniques while we're here if you want to make like a shirt a clothing piece or an armor piece from a sculpted character don't model that manually in the sculpting mode select the mask brush or draw the areas you want to extract then go to mask extract it from the mesh then you can modify the properties then once that's done it will give you the geometry and then in the modifiers tag you can solidify it and that's going to give you a separate object taken from the surface of your sculpt and you can smooth that down and do whatever you like with it add some cloth details if you like it's up to you that saves you a lot of time that you would have spent just like manually adding vertices and subdividing it smoothing it around maybe shrink wrapping it onto the object yeah sort that okay what if you want to make a frame around something sure you could make a cube and extrude the faces and rotate them and kind of modify all these vertices to fit like a frame around the object or you could not be dumb and instead make a plane delete half the vertices and add a skin modifier to the object then select one of the vertices and every time you press e you're going to make a new line and the modifier is going to automatically generate mesh content around that you can then press ctrl and a on any vertex point to increase its size or decrease it depending on where your mouse cursor is placed and then if you want to smooth out the result, you can add a subdivision surface modifier instead. The interesting thing about the skin modifier is that when you're connecting points together, say if you have two vertices and you press F to connect them, it's going to automatically interpret the mesh. So that's going to save you time. But you can, of course, combine all of these techniques. So let's say you had like a skin modifier result and you had a manually modeled boxed mesh frame. You can run these through a remesh modifier and connect them together. Not that you would want to, but I'm just trying to make a point here that everything is connective. You could get a bit more esoteric and 
use the grease pencil strokes to concept your meshes. This is something that I know Gemma Jurabai have experimented with some years ago. Where if you want, you can literally just draw in 3D space using the grease pencil and then convert the strokes to geometry afterwards. You may have to go through curves first, I can't exactly remember. If you want to be more precise with your placement of grease pencil strokes, then you'll need to consider where the 3D cursor is. And there'll be a bunch of settings there as well for kind of deciding where the stroke should be placed. So strictly speaking, you could draw your blueprints for an object in 3D space and then just model around that. Okay, what if you're like really lazy and you just need some inspiration? Well, this is where like my Biogen add-on is going to come in handy. There's still a lot of stuff I want to do with it, but you should check out my Generators Lab content pack for the add-on because I've got like some really weird modeling techniques in the parametric section. But if you're super lazy and you want to concept models, you can just randomly scatter objects together using geometry nodes and then remesh them after the fact. If you wanted some structure, you could scatter objects along curves in geometry nodes and then remesh those. Let's say you had like a curve template for every kind of creature or character you wanted to make, you know, like bipedal, quadruped, different types of creatures like that. And then let's say you had like a bunch of simplified meshes you could bash together, a bit like using the spore creature creator. And then you can see what the results come up with. So you're not actually doing any manual modeling effort. It's all parametric. You could get a bit fancy and do what I did in a few years past and make procedural generation scripts. I did like a random weapon generator. And again, if you want to sculpt over the top, remesh it. You can take 2D results from generated AI images and then pass these for a depth map converter and then use these to generate 3D geometry. That's a bit of a limited technique, but it kind of works. More information in this video. Or if you even wanted photogrammetry or LiDAR scanning, I've got a pretty good video about that here. And Gleb Alexandrov has a fantastic photogrammetry course available. I'll leave my affiliate link down below. Basically, what I'm trying to say is there are so many ways to get like 3D mesh content. There are so many parts of the process you can subvert. You can skip out the shape transition part. You can skip out the inspiration part if you're doing like random generation. But you should, of course, understand as well that if you do subvert parts of the process, you're going to be missing out on certain skills. It really depends what you want to do. It really depends what you're going for at the end of the day. Are you developing for yourself? Are you developing for a specific industry? Is there a pipeline? You're following, you know, make an assessment, make a judgment. But I think it's just my job here in this video to let you know that there are other techniques you can employ if you want to make 3D meshes. So hopefully this has given you like a variety of stuff to try. And if you do, if you come up with some really cool results by trying some of these different techniques, then let me know, like show me your results, tag me in your work on Twitter or Instagram, or even on YouTube as well. Just have fun with it. I have so many ideas for things I want to experiment with, and I'll be doing that as part of my Biogen project. It's a continuous project. The add-on is free if you want to download it. Like I think 95 percent of all the ideas for new modeling techniques I've had just haven't been added yet because I just haven't given myself the time to do it but we'll get there in the meantime maybe enjoy some of my other videos on the channel consider signing up to my patreon you can get your name put permanently on this evolving piece of artwork which I'm calling the hall of patrons it's my place to appreciate all the beautiful people speaking of new patrons we have James Oliver Titus Andronicus and Jesse Wolf or Jess Wolf however you would like me to pronounce your name I gave you both options thank you very much beautiful people I bestow you the blessings of Curtis forever have good fortune and be in good health. If you made it to the end of this video, the emoji I want you to put in the comments so I can see who made it this far is going to be a dog. Because dogs are better than cats. No, I'm not going to do that. Because I love dogs. I love all pets. But I have a wonderful dog, so it's a dog for now. Feel free to join our Discord server, check out some of my products on curtishold.online slash store, and do all the other wonderful things. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.